bet there's one more person out there, Dallas, who believed in you. We had, we talked about her a little bit last week. Uh, and she's there at the very beginning of this. Kimberly, you actually got married, I think, right around the time you became a wrestler, right? Oh my God. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, because I literally have my first match. It's me and Scott Hall against um, uh, Chad, Ch Todd Champion, uh, the Patriot, and um, um, the Fire uh, Firebreaker Chip. Chip, Our driver, Chip. and Chip oh and I, God. Chip and I were tight. Chip would come to the power plant. I could talk some of the boys occasionally to coming down and work with me. And Chip came down like five or six times. Like we were boys, right? So now, you know, let's, this is my first time in the ring. You know, no cameras, right? And, you know, you figure out what you're going to do. You talk about what you want to do. And Scott's like, just call it in the ring. Like, yeah, right. I'm not, I don't have that ability at that point. And, uh, so, uh, it's going to be, Scott's going to start and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to work with Chip because we've been working together. So Scott walks around, does his thing, throws a freaking toothpick. Tags me and steps on the air. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but he doesn't tag, but, but friggin' Chip friggin' tags friggin' Dodd in. So now it's me and Todd, and we yeah. ain't talked about anything. And he's a beast at that time. He's every bit of 295 shredded, six foot five. So we have our match. And it's actually pretty damn good for me. It's not good. Yeah. Not, not for, not for <laughs> you know, main event status, but for opening curtain jerker match for the guy who's never really had a match like this and, you know, had to call a couple spots, you know, you know, it was, it, I felt really good about it. Everybody did. So the next day we're going to Maryland and in Maryland, this I'm leaving to go home after this to get married. In Fort Myers, Florida, Kim and I are getting married. So we get in the ring and this one is not going so well. And Todd and Chip, they're like, they don't mean, there's, there's about 6,000 people there because it's Baltimore. Like you'd never get, maybe it was 3,000, but it was a good house, really good house for WCW. And they were ringing my arm, ring my arm, ring my arm. And I'm, they're stiff, like, and I know they don't mean to be, but they're excited. Chip, Chip caught me with a couple, and I thought, next week, he lets me go, I'm going to knock shit out of him. And I just kicked the dog shit out of him. Bing, bang, boom. We go to the finish. We come walking through the curtains. You remember that shit, that little arena, a little civic center there? It's small. It's tight. There's a bunch of cubby hole, little rooms that you can get changed in, take showers, office to do whatever. And as we're walking in, Chip starts cutting a promo on me. That's really loud. loud. If you can't learn how to work, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be out there doing that. And blah, blah, blah. He goes, you motherfucker. And so I start getting in his ass. Now we're face to face. And then chest bump. Now people are starting to walk out. Chest bump. And friggin' he hauls off and hits me right here. Swings through. And he knock me but i was so jacked up at that moment i hit him with a front knee and front face locked him came over and now i've taken out a number of people out of the nightclub in this position i owned you at this moment and this guy's my buddy like he's bringing the guy who worked with me uh, but he was fucking amped up. I was amped up. So now I'm bracking. What the hell do you think you're doing? And I'm picking right off the ground. Scotty Steiner's coming out. I mean, oh, Lex Luger, everybody's coming out. And friggin', I said, I'm going to let you go, man. But we go swinging. We ain't quitting. You know, we can let it go, let it go, let it go. He come up and he walked away. And I walked right after him. I go, dude, what the hell was that all about? Because he's my boy. I love this guy because he actually took the time to spend time with me and work with me and teach me. And the bottom line is it, 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 
Paul, is it uh, dangerous? Paul Heyman? I was like, dude, no, like mine, like, just go, just go. And I went back, you know, went back to uh, the hotel and Scott Hall looked at me and he said, you just got more over there than you could have in a hundred matches. You know, just being able to stop the situation, yeah. not taking it too far. But I got this cut right here. <laughs> you know, the, Bruce. the night before oh, Thanksgiving, by the way. That's the night before Thanksgiving. No, not Thanksgiving. The night before I get married to Kimberly. Like, oh, okay. The Baltimore oh, God, show God. was was the night before. Right. That would have been that following Monday that we got married. Yeah. On December 1st. Yeah. Yes, right. So it was that following week. And I'm thinking, if he caught me right here, she'd have been so pissed off. I'm like, you think that's bad? Let me tell you what they did back in my day. But the 1974, when I started refereeing, because that's what you started, I yeah. up. I was getting married, and my soon to be wife was a few months pregnant, which had serious heat amongst the German community I was married into. <laughs> Bob Sweetan, Ken Mantel, and somebody else held me down in the locker room and put the god awfulest hickeys up and down oh my neck. My. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And I'm going the next day to get married. Oh, my God. And it's not oh. like I can put a turtleneck on. <laughs> I got these giant hickeys all down my neck. Oh my God. And the bride's pregnant and nobody's smiling. <laughs> I told him what happened. Yeah. He didn't believe me. <laughs> you think we believe you? <laughs> there you no, go. I do believe you. I just want to have you. That that's, a brutal, that, man. that's a brutal rip. Oh, it was. Oof. Hey, and, and, let, and let me go back to yes, Kim followed my dream. And there was a point, there was a point before Eric re-signed me, it was 11 months from me getting let go to me coming back. And, um, she, um, she was like, you gotta go back in the bar business. I mean, it is, they're not gonna hire you back. You know, you're. Um, 37 years old now they're 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 not you're not going to get this opportunity and i said to her honey if you don't believe what i'm doing you need not to let that door hit you in the ass on the way out the door because i'm not quitting i'm not i will not be denied and she she would hear me say over the period how many times does moses have to part the red sea for you to believe. And there was a point in time where she absolutely believed. If I told her I was doing something, she believed it was gonna happen. And that it took time, you know, cause she was a young girl. If she was, she was 23 then. If she was 30, she'd have been gone. <laughs> and I don't mean her, I mean any woman, you know, they were like, okay, he's gonna play wrestlers all life. I'm gonna go get it, you know, I'm moving on. But she did it and we had a hell of a 13 year run and we're still, best friends today I mean, she she owns a piece of ddp yoga uh she's very influential in a lot of decisions that i make and uh she uh really is uh supported like it took eight years to become an overnight success in professional wrestling it took eight years to be an overnight success with ddp yoga eight years tell me how that works yeah, yeah. 